last week, Sensei Yusuke Nagano, a karate coach in Japan and host of the Karate Dojo Waku YouTube channel, joined us and talked about the traditions of teaching Shotokan Karate in Japan. Today he's with us to share his exploration of other karate styles and martial arts around the world. Well, thank you for being here, Sensei. Um, you've been doing a lot of effort in your channel, taking the time to kind of step out of your own system of Shotokan and explore other martial arts and your reactions to that. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience and what you've seen and learned so far? Right. Um, it's been very interesting uh, so far because I've known Shotokan, just Shotokan, for <clears throat> like eight years since I started karate. So I never imagined myself learning other styles. And it's common to just do one style in Japan. So it's been a very unique um, experience um, overall. And it's especially interesting to see um, styles um, that's, that branch off from Shotokan, such as uh, Tang, Tang Sodo. I was so surprised to see something like that in Korea. I never imagined. And, you know, styles that uh, are in the States as well. So I'm still deciding on deciding whether I should learn those seriously or not but it's always fun especially when you spar to take those you know different um, techniques from other styles that aren't so far away from what you do because some, that's something you can just take in without that much effort so it, it's it's been very fun so there's something like Tang Sudo you mentioned so Tang Sudo is based very heavily on Shotokan correctly mm -hmm. so do, do you see a lot of similarities or yeah, are there any like strange deviations that kind of were unexpected? I think it, they're very, very similar. And um, however, the footwork is slightly different. Um, Shotokan has a, a very heavy emphasis on uh, the relaxation of the knee, um, having your pelvis um, upright and, you know, pushing with the back leg and those little te technical parts, which makes a huge difference between the black belts or not even the black belts, but the very, very good um, karateka and the beginners. But I didn't see those um, emphasized so much in um, Tang Sodo. So maybe the founder didn't think that was useful or maybe it just got um, um, deleted in the history. I'm not so sure, but um, those little part um, things, I think um, is a, uh, the main difference. When you see it from far away, I don't think you can tell the difference, but when you see up close and if you have experience on either side of it, I, th I think there are no small um, techniques that are different in the background. Now you recently traveled to Okinawa. What was that experience like? Oh yeah. Like? Uh, <laughs> it was my first, oh, I've been to Okinawa a lot of times for vacation. We, mm -hmm. You know, the beaches there are just amazing. So, I mean, I used to go there a lot, but then for karate, it was my first time going and it was a lot more laid back. That was my first impression. In, um, in Japan, a lot of the karate schools um, are very are very strict, I guess, um, to the Western audience, um, so that the Western audience can imagine it. Like when you go in, you have to be respectful. Like you have to you have to switch uh, mentally after entering the dojo. Like you have to bow. Um, like 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 I mentioned in the, in the other video, you have to put your stuff very neatly. Um, when you talk to the sensei, you have to be respectful. And I wouldn't say like, it's not, it's not like an army, but it's almost like entering an army. It's very strict, but uh, in Okinawa, I thought that was what the expectation was from the teacher. So I went in just like that. And the teacher was just like, no, 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 just sit down. Let's have a little chat. <laughs> so I was like, okay, <laughs> that's how it is here. So it's a, I mean, it used to be a different country, a kingdom there too. So some of the Okinawans um, still have their pride in, in their culture and they differentiate themselves from um, Japan. So um, the culture was a lot different. They're more laid back. They want another person. It's like karate is really something they do daily. It's very, um, um, you know, very relaxed. So. I mean, I, I personally liked it because it's something so new to me. So just a quick curiosity. So like Okinawa, um, karate started in Okinawa and then went to Japan. Were there any influences in Japanese karate that went back to Okinawa? Um, like, um, I would say yes, um, regarding terms, um, like uh, t t technical terms. Um, in Okinawa, 
when they said, uh, well, in in Japan, uh, or I would say mainland Japan, we say kokusudachi for back stances, zenkusudachi for front stances, uh, kibadachi or shikodachi for the horse stance. However, in Okinawa, those didn't exist. They just said, put the weight at the back or put the weight at the front, have the weight in the middle. That's how they just described it. <laughs> There wasn't like a, like a term to explain things. For punches, we have something like oizuki, kyakuzuki,、uh, uchi. But in Okinawa, they just said,、uh, just, just punch or just punch with the back fist. It was, it was like that. So、uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure when it was, but it got influence、um, from the Japanese language too. So, I would say that's one.、Um, technical aspects, I don't think there has been a huge influence, I think. They've been going on on their own.、Um, yeah, I think that's the main that's the main influence. Of course, the, the Okinawan karate has been putting in a lot of influence, or I guess it's the origin of the Japanese、um, styles. So, you can see that vector, but the other way around, not, not so much, I guess. So basically, a lot of things you wouldn't notice unless you actually went there and were able to compare the two. Right. I never I never imagined something like that. <laughs> <laughs> It was after talking to the Okinawa masters. And there aren't a lot of um, Japanese um, videos or Japanese books、um, explaining about the differences between Okinawa and、um, Japanese karate. So,、uh, unless you go, go there and talk to somebody in person, it's, it's very hard to. Um, actually, you know, learn it within your head. Let me ask you this. So, when you decide to look at another art that's not your own, if you want to experience something new, do you have、mm -hmm. a particular criteria and how you choose which art you're going to look at next? And do you go in with the mindset of trying to compare it to Shotokan, or are you trying to just go in completely blind and, and take it in all as new? As for the forms, when a martial art has forms,、um, I, I compare it to Shotokan. Or to the Okinawan、um, karate styles, because that's, that's, that's what I know only. So, and also, if you look at the person's movement, you can tell how much work they've been putting into it, regardless of the style. So, I guess I, that wouldn't be a, a style comparison, but it would be like a practitioner comparison. When you see somebody do a, I think I recently did a、uh, Shuriryu karate. Uh, uh, very, I think it's American、um, karate style. I did a, uh, uh, like a reaction al analysis video on that. And I, I think I did three, three people. And there were obviously、um, skill differences. And that's something you can pick up if you do martial arts. So I guess, yeah, that, that part for kata, for forms, for、um, sparring, kumite. Um, I think I, I unconsciously think about whether I can implement it to my sparring or not. So I have my set of、um, ways of doing the sparring and techniques like,、um, like boxing punches. Still, I don't have a lot of experience. So it's very hard for me to come up with the equation of how can I、um, combine these together. But for, let's say, Taekwondo, the art distance is very similar. So their kicks are very,、uh, I guess, rather easier. For me to combine. So, those、um, for sure. I like that you said that. I like that you said that you look at their kumite and you're doing it for the purpose to draw ideas from as opposed to trying to impose your expectations on them. Because there's a lot、oh. of tendency for people to want to criticize other arts, but I like、oh. that. I like that <laughs>、oh. you're doing the other viewpoint that you're trying to draw inspiration from it. I, I think that's fantastic. And I think that's honestly what more people should be doing in the martial arts. I, I, I just want to thank you for that. I see. That oh, no, no. I never thought about doing the opposite. So, <laughs> all critiquing. It's all over oh, YouTube. I yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I, I sense that and I don't like、mm -hmm. it. So, that's why I want to stay away from it. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no,、yeah. reason, there's no reason to think your style is absolute because nothing is absolute. <laughs> Things change. So, exactly. Well, I just want to say that I love that, that you're being so positive about it, that you're trying to、oh, just、no. draw more knowledge. I think, that's, I think that is the goal. Of what we're doing here, basically. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so I have to ask what's the most curious thing you've seen in another martial art? I did four or three or four videos on Iaido, which is the art of the, the sword in Japan.、Mm -hmm. 
And the master that I talked to, he was a, he had a different,、um, I, don't, I don't want to use the word aura, but he had a different feel.、Um, what I mean is,、um, in other martial arts where sparring is very common, like Taekwondo,、um, uh, Chinese, uh, like Wushu, and those, I guess, martial arts, or something like you do. Where sparring is, I guess, allowed or very common.、Um, we have this common understanding that sparring is something,、uh, it works as a way of communication. So you spar, you, you sense the other people, and you become friends through sparring. But、um, when the martial art doesn't have sparring, such as、uh, you know, Iaido, if you spar, you're dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> Those, those martial arts,、um, their focus on, I guess, like completing or I guess practicing a technique is for the purpose of actually killing. So it's at a, such a high level that you can't really approach them so casually, if you know what I mean. You know, seeing those people, and、um, if you guys、um, know Kurobi World, which is a martial arts、uh, YouTube channel,、uh, a Japanese one. There is、uh, one sensei called Miyahara Sensei. He does、um, Chinese martial arts. And he, I, I never met him in person, but he has that same feel. Like, if, if you were to spar him, it's, it's literally a life or death situation. You really have to put in that much energy, and the, the decision is that heavy. And so, see, I never imagined something like that、um, to be in the martial art world. Since coming from Shotokan, Shotokan does sparring. So that was something very eye opening and very scary, to be honest. Like, I don't know if I would be able to go on to that stage at all until I die. So that's something very、uh, interesting for me. Absolutely. Because, like, like, even here,、um, we have schools that will hold open sparring days. Like, they encourage people from other arts to come in. And it's all about, you know, learning from each other, having a good,、mm. you know, friendly sparring match, improving. So, like, when you're describing that, that's actually can be very jarring and very intense. So, it's actually、mm. interesting that you've encountered that. I, I never kind、mm. of,、um, I never considered that myself, that walking、mm. to school like that. So, they don't, so you're saying they don't have that friendly camaraderie sparring. It's they're well, training they, hard and you're going to better train hard with them. They would be talking to you very nicely, very casually, but their eyes are just scary. <laughs> They're not laughing. <laughs> yeah, so it's not, a game, would, <laughs> it's not a game. It's not a game at all. And it's, it's not like they're a McDojo. Some people might call it a McDojo, but it, it's not. It's not. When you see the person and, and when you see the, him in person, you, you know, you really cannot mess, up, mess with him. So you also mentioned that.、Um... You're still looking around, but you haven't decided if there's anything that you want to pursue seriously. But have you come across any arts that you looked at? You're like, huh, that would actually mend or blend very well with Shotokan or something that you think would complement Shotokan、uh, more、uh, so than other arts? Shotokan, as in the, like, the style itself or from a competitive aspect? Well,、Which、coming from a Shotokan training, your background is Shotokan.、Uh, have you seen any other arts that you've been like, you know what? We don't have that, or that might. Help me with this, or I'd like to blend that. Has anything jumped out at you that you found interesting that you think that would work well to incorporate into your own training? I think I think the the closest one and the easiest one would be the Okinawan、uh, styles. So, like sh Shorin Ryu, I think would be very good.、Uh, we have sim similar katas,、um, and the way they execute the technique is,、um, is a little bit different. Like the way they relax the body, the way they do the kicks.、Um, They're all they're, they're just slight differences, but I think it、um, complements very well. In Shotokan, when you punch, you make a kime, so you punch like this. But then in Okinawa, n、like, uh, sh 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 Shorin Ryu, their punch is a little bit more like they relax the elbow and it's more pulled back. So those、uh, differences, when you, you know, learn that. You learn how to, okay, you, I can relax this much if I do sh Shorin Ryu. So maybe when I do Shotokan, I can you know, get that down to like 30% and apply it to my skills, something like that. So Shorin Ryu would be one option.、Um, I would say、um, that ITF Taekwondo, I think, would be good as well. 
uh, their katas are very similar too. And um, they focus a lot, a little bit more on、um, dropping down. In Shotokan, we're told to keep the head at the same level and use the extension of the knee to generate power.、Um, however,、um, in ITF Taekwondo katas, I think they call it a、uh, tool. Pomse is for WTF, the one in the Olympics.、Um, they go up. So when the legs are apart, when they when they go together, they go up, and then they when they step forward, they go down. And by using this up and down motion, they change this this falling gravity to this forward momentum, and they're very used to doing that. So although we are taught not to get the head up, it's just one way to use the body. And their sparring, like I mentioned, is very similar.、Um, WTF、uh, Taekwondo is very light, so if you touch, you get a point. So I don't think that's very.、Um, So something we can use in Shotokan, but ITF Taekwondo they actually hit, and the techniques are、um, quite similar. So that's something I think will、um, complement or benef-、um, become very beneficial for Shotokan. Now, speaking of beneficial, I saw one of your episodes that I, I thought was really fun when you covered the virtual sparring event. The, the、uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought that was really creative, and that got me thinking because you did that, and I had never seen that before. But、um, I did an、mm. episode a little while back about using virtual reality headsets and, and see if that would implement or、uh-huh. or, or, or complement sparring and karate at all. So my question is: Is there any technology like now? You know, we're in a time where we've got Zoom meetings and there's a lot of different programs out there. Virtual reality. Is there any technology coming up or technology that we have now that you think helps or it's going to help the martial arts or or even hurt it?、Um, I think the maybe in like five years AR. Is gonna have a pretty large effect on、um, learning martial arts or, and learning something physical, because I do Zoom and you know it's two dimensional. So, but if if the AR、um, technology advances, then I'll be able to project myself like in Star Wars, <laughs> and project my own body into students' you know living room, and they can they can move to see the different angles of. A sensei's body, which is amazing. What I have to do right now is, when I want to show、um, my body from the side, I move to the side, and then when I want to show my f-、um, body from the front, I move to the front and I angle myself. But that's only from my context. If the student wants to, you know, see myself from the side when I'm facing them, then they can freely do that. And you know, maybe with a finger like Tony Stark does, you, you, they can just do this and then zoom in. And when that happens. That's a breakthrough. So I'm、Sign、very looking for forward that. to that. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be very expensive in the first few years, I'm sure. But when it comes very,、um, very cheap, I'm gonna be the first one to do it in this martial arts world. So <laughs> I'm very. And I'll totally to sign up for that because I think that's because <laughs> there, it, you're right. There's a huge difference being able to just change an angle and see a better detail than you would on the、mm. flat screen. I mean that that、right. is a huge benefit. I think it'll be easier even um, to um, see in AR because if you're in an actual classroom, sometimes you know when everybody's focused and standing in the same spot, it's very hard for just you to move around and see the if, if from a different angle, and you can't zoom in. But if it's AR, then just, just spin and then just you know zoom, and nobody's. I mean, you're you're in your own space, so I, you're not gonna feel pressure to do the same like others. So I, I and and it's also you know you can still have conversations. So I think it's very, very good. Well, speaking of technology and connectivity like that, with the internet these days, we've got YouTube channels. There seems to be a lot of even though we all have basically the same anatomy and martial arts vary so much from country to country. There seems to be a lot of attitudes online about whose arts better and the better way to、oh. do it. What are some things that are things that you think people should keep in mind? In terms of when they look at other arts, like what should they be aware of? You know, what are some prejudices that they should leave behind? Like, just any any advice for attitudes going in looking at someone else's martial art? Well, first of all, I think it's okay to have that、um, that critical、um, way of looking at other martial arts. I, I I think it's okay because I think their goal is to perfect their art. So when they see other martial arts, it's not aligned with their martial arts. So I think it's Natural for them to react back to it, but、um, for people, I think the battle, w- the reason why there's a battle is because、um, there are people that、um, think of martial art as a way to 
get themselves better or get themselves um, stronger and the focus is on them and not the style so for those it's it's so natural to just take different bits and pieces from other martial arts so i think it's just a perspective difference and i i, I mean I'm, I'm on the latter side so when i see people critiquing um other styles i i like my first reaction would be why is he saying that but then when you think deeply about it well their their main focus is to just do shotokan so i mean there's, there's no use persuading them to, to <laughs> become open-minded i mean i i hope they do but it's not something i would force them to do as long as you're doing the work if you're just mm -hmm. you know s saying something bad about other styles just why not spend that time on doing 10 more punches so can you give us any hints? Are there any particular arts that you're looking forward to, uh, to investigating? Or do you have anything coming up that we can uh, look forward to? Oh. Um, I, um, after the Olympics, I will be interviewing the top uh, karateka in Japan. I can't tell who because it's not fixed yet, <laughs> but <laughs> I will hopefully get uh, some of them on my channel as their interview. So please look forward to that one. And um, I, I'm hopefully going to be going back to Okinawa later this year when, the, when, the, uh, when it's like fall, winter, because Okinawa summers are just too hot. <laughs> I don't want to go there. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe in like, um, I don't know, September. No, September is still hot. Um, uh, uh, November, somewhere there, you might see a second series. And here and there, I will be going to other styles like uh, ITF, Taekwondo, and other styles of Shotokan, um, such as uh, Renbukai, which is a full body armor um, karate style. It's different from Kyokushin. It's, um, it's, it comes from uh, uh, Shudokan. I, it, maybe you've heard of the name Shudokan in this style? I've heard of it, yes. It, it seems um, Shudokan was originally in, in Tokyo, but then a lot of people brought it to, I think, Mexico. Uh, there's a huge Shudokan community and in the States as well. But the one in Tokyo, yeah. it, 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 it's dead now. We don't have it in Japan anymore. And it's only in, in, in um, other countries. And But Shudokan changed. Um, the members are still there. So they changed its name to uh, Renbukai. And they have their whole armor. The headgear is different. And it's closer. So think of it as Shotokan full contact. Um, they There are styles like that in Japan. So I look forward to it going to those dojos to do it so that one i can tell you that i will do <laughs> well sensei just again i want to say thank you so much for spending your time today i think it's absolutely wonderful what you're doing like so you're, you're expanding out you're looking at other arts and you're exposing your viewers to more arts out there and opening up their ideas mm -hmm. so i just think that's absolutely wonderful and just want to thank you for your hard work and thank you for being on our show today thank you so much once again, I'd like to extend a big thank you to Sensei Yusuke Nagano. I really enjoyed this collaboration and I appreciate his time to share his experiences with us. If you didn't see last week's video, I definitely recommend it and I've linked it in the description below. And also please visit his Karate Dojo Waku channel. There you can find our discussions comparing American Kenpo to traditional Karate among other fantastic videos in his library. As an exclusive episode for our Patreon subscribers and YouTube memberships, I talk with Sensei in a special off the mat interview. That's a, that's a very funny question. It's so weird to be talking about this, but... Visit us on Patreon or click the join button below for access.